Ever wonder how people make awesome online tutorials, whether it's for another website, whether it's for YouTube, whatever the medium. Well, today we're gonna look at ScreenFlow 8 and what's new with this version of this screen capturing software. So re real quick, sorry, uh, interruption here. This is not a sponsored video by ScreenFlow 8 or Telestream or whatever. I just really love the software and wanted to share what's new with you. So yeah, um, this is, this is awkward. Um, intro. <laughs> Now, if you don't know what ScreenFlow is, maybe you're new to the game, maybe you're new to recording your, your screen um, when you want to teach somebody something, it is a non-linear video editing software um, at its core, but its main functionality is to record your desktop. That's what makes it great. Honestly, that's what sets it apart from a lot of its competitors is its ability to quickly capture and let you edit. There's a few other editing softwares out there that has that capability, but this is by far the best if you have a Mac. Let's just jump straight into it because I want to talk to you about something that I find super awesome that has saved me a tremendous amount of time. When I create a video, I, I have my video, I have my slides, I have whatever else I need when I'm creating a course or whatever and then I record my audio, clean it up, transfer, import, blah, blah, blah. I have my audio, my video, and I gotta land it all and it's a mess. It's a process, it's a workflow, it works, and I got it down to be fairly quick. With the new quick narrations and voiceover editions, I can quickly hit a button, record my voice or my narration, and it automatically adds it to or above the track, as you'll see in a second, and I don't ever need to leave my application. I don't need to go to Adobe Edition. I don't need to record, clean it, whatever, bring it in and align. I can just quickly hit a button, record, and I'm done. It's pretty sweet. Let's actually just check it out real quick. So all you need to do is go over to insert a narration and you see this new little window pop up and it changes the play button to a record button. And you just pick whatever audio device you want to record in. Right now I'm not plugged into anything so it's just saying built in microphone. You can say I want it to end at a certain duration and you can also mute all the other audio on your system as you record. And as you record, it gives you the same three, two, one counter as the previous versions when you're recording video. And you can see that it's going to add audio above any video tracks I have. And when I'm all done, I just click stop. And now I have automatically my audio file that I can click, edit, do whatever I want with and I'm done. It's it's pretty simple, and I think this is gonna be great for online educators, because it just took a massive process and condensed it into a few steps. So, well done, ScreenFlow. Now, there are a few other neat features. I'm not gonna cover them all. Um, there are some that are awesome, and there are some that are, uh, eh, whatever. It just looks like they made something to make something. but. The ability to uh, export as an APNG is pretty awesome. If you don't know what an APNG is, it's not alpha PNG, it's animated PNG. And you have the capability of actually having an alpha channel with it. Stay with me here. Um, but it's a GIF. It's essentially a GIF, but it's not. I'm gonna say the word GIF because everyone in the world is, they know what a GIF is. But what an APNG is, it's just an animated PNG that has the ability to have an alpha channel. Now, why are APNGs great? Well, imagine a GIF that looks beautiful with the ability to have an alpha channel. See, you can have a clear background and you're not gonna have jagged strokes all over your GIF. It's actually gonna look neat. Now, the other great thing about APNGs, the file sizes are relatively small and they look amazing. So another quick win for the ScreenFlow team. Oh, sorry, um, before we celebrate, them too quickly. Um, when you do actually go to export and you go to manual, check your presets and you click on that magical animated PNG, what should happen is we should get an APNG extension. We don't. We actually just get a dot PNG. I imagine this glitch or this bug or this error will be fixed. For instance, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if I click on GIF, I get the file extension GIF, right? That's just awesome. 
if I click on PNG, the animated PNG, I just get PNG. So if I mistakenly click that thinking it's actually gonna work and I click on export, I'm not gonna get an actual A PNG. I'm just gonna get a still image. Um, so I imagine they'll fix that, but until then, click and add an A. That's all you need to do. Also, go to customize and make sure loop is clicked. That way you don't have like a, a four second animation that doesn't loop, it just, it just ends and you have a four second video. And if you have a background that is clear or alpha channel, however you wanna describe it, something that's opaque, you can click on alpha channel, boom, you're good to go. Another thing that they added is the capability to go all the way up to 60 frames per second. Whatever, it's awesome, cool, click it if you need it. Um, and that is how you make an animated PNG. It's pretty simple. Another fun thing is the ability to track a thumbnail. Like it kind of sounds weird, but if you click on this image icon, you can change your thumbnail options that have no thumbnail, single thumbnail, and a track thumbnail. So if you have a video on the timeline, and let's just zoom in, and you have your single thumbnail, what you're gonna see is a thumbnail at the very beginning. That's just how it looks, right? You can click on track thumbnail. You're gonna see almost keyframes on your video layer. You're gonna see each thumbnail play out, boom, boom, boom. And that is awesome because if I make online content that contains a lot of slides, I don't need to scrub back and forth. I can easily just look at the thumbnail, see where I need to make a cut, and then rearrange my video layers and I'm done. So a few great things from ScreenFlow, not only to make the processes quicker and nicer, but a few other exporting goodies with it. Now there are a tremendous amount of other things that they have done. I will leave a link description um, to their actual website that has a list, but those are my favorites and I think those are kind of game changers for the screen capturing world. So that's all for this video. Click like if you liked it, if it was helpful for you. And also don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video.